Hey guys, I'm here to do the last book talk for the Inferno Devices series, Clockwork Princess. This book gave me so many feels, so much crying. I absolutely loved this book. I think I loved it more than Clockwork Prince, so I'm changing it. Clockwork Princess is now my favorite one. There's not a lot for me to say. This is the last book in a series. For those who haven't read it, I'm just going to dive in into the spoiler section. So go read it and then come back, okay? Bye! I caution you. There's going to be nudity. Nudity! Haha! <laughs> you thought I meant the other kind. Sickos. The jacket has the family tree. I was disappointed that it didn't have Clary's tree. We do learn that Clary is actually a fair child because once Charlotte took the position of the consul, they were going to name the kids Fair Child. As I said, this was my favorite book out of the entire series. Of the Inferno Devices series, of course. We have two different stories in the prologue. We have Aloysius Starkweather's story on how his granddaughter turned forsaken, which we now know it was because she was a human. They switched Tessa's mom for that mundane baby, so Tessa is a shadow hunter slash demon. <laughs> That's not it. She is a warlock, but she's also have Shadow Hunter. There was no extra step done to Tessa's mom. Apparently, it's all in the runes. Once the Shadow Hunter is ruined, the Shadow Hunter and Demon Baby is born dead. Since Tessa's mom was switched with that mundane baby and she was never ruined, then we have the Will and Gem story on how they first met as children. Will was one cruel child. Gem's like, yay, we can be partners, we can train together. And Will's like, no, no, I need someone who can keep up with me, not some sickly creature that looks as if he's doddering off to the grave. Although I suppose you might be useful for target practice. Jim, he just brushed it off his shoulder like, it's okay, I've heard it before, I'm gonna die, so what? We go back to where everybody's at. Tessa's getting fitted for her wedding dress, and I'm here thinking, my gosh, she's gonna go with the wedding. Everybody's gathered around because Gabriel Lightwood has entered the building. He's all like, guys, guys. Dad's a worm. Yep, we knew that. It was just a matter of time before you figured it out for yourself. No, he's a worm. An actual worm. Turns to Will and says, how does demon pox end? I mean, you're the expert here, aren't you? We never learned how demon pox ends because in Clockwork Prince, Gabriel's and Gideon's mom kills herself. So apparently demon pox ends with the person turning into a demon. So they go to Chiswick Manor, they fight the demon, and we meet Tatiana there. We do. We meet Tatiana and she reminds me so much of Jessamine. Tatiana seems to me like she thinks the whole world revolves around her. She's one of those girls. Cecily reminded me so much of Isabel. They're, they're headstrong. They're protective over their feelings, and they don't want to get hurt. Initially, she had come to the Institute to bring Will back home with her, but she ended up loving it, and she stayed a shadow hunter, and we all knew she was going to end up with Gabriel, because everybody in that house has to end up with someone. The necklace that Isabel has in TMI gets to her because she's Cecily's great-great-great-granddaughter? Did I say too many greats? Magnus had given the necklace to Camille, but then when they broke up, Camille sent it back to him. Magnus gives the necklace to Will, and then Will gives it to Cecily. These Will and Jem scenes, those were the ones that got me. The scene where Will finds out that Jem has been taking more Yin Fen than he's supposed to. You should want to live, James. And Jim just, he's angry, he's like, but I'm not going to live. And it hit me. Jem is going to die in this book. It was a tough time. The battle in front of the Institute, everybody was already fighting. Even Charlotte with her belly. I, I was super scared. I was like, somebody get in front of her. Someone protect Charlotte and her unborn child. And who protects them better than Bridget? Because Bridget is badass. I never liked Jessamine, but the way she died was so horrible. Mortimer sends that letter saying that if he gets Tessa, he'll send them all the Yin Fen he has. With or without the Yin Fen, Jem was going to die, and it's something they did not understand. Sure, if Tessa went to sacrifice herself, she would have given Jem a couple extra more weeks to live. She would be killed probably by Mortimer by that time. He knew he was going to die with or without the Yin Fen, and he'd prefer to die without it. Council Wayland's letters, I thought, okay, Mortimer has him brainwashed, he's controlling him, he has something on Council Wayland. All those things that Council Wayland was saying about Charlotte couldn't have been true. I mean, he was the one who put Charlotte at the head of the London Institute. But 
didn't know. Josiah Wayland said he only placed Charlotte at the head of the London Institute because he thought she would be easy to control. She's a fair child, okay? She's related to Clary. You should know that those people never do what they're told. I hated him after reading that and why would he take the Lightwoods, the boys, to a strip club? It was so funny. Gideon was trying to do that thing where he covers his little brother's eyes like, don't look. By the angel, this place is barely better than any penny gaff. Gabriel, don't look at anything unless I tell you to, alright? And I'm glad Council Wayland got his off, you know, as the, that guy was pissing me off. Aloysia Starkweather's like, ha ha, she told you all this would happen, and then he just dies. His last words. What a brave man. The second scene between Will and Jim, the one that got me hard, the one where I was really, really crying hard, it was after the battle of the Institute and everybody thought this was it. Will had summoned Magnus. Maybe Magnus knew Jem was already awake. That's my theory. But Magnus says, does Jem know you're in love with Tessa? Will, he's about to leave. Jem grabs his wrist and he's like, I'm not dead yet, Will. Yes, he's alive. He asks, is what Magnus said true? What are you gonna say, Will? And then he starts telling Jim the truth about how he is in love with Tessa. I was ready to hate Jim at this point because I needed something. I needed something to hate Jim to make my decision easier to have Will and Tessa together forever. I was waiting for Jim to be like, how can you do this to me? I'm your Parabati. She's the woman I love. And make Will feel guilty for the way he felt, but no. Jim says, I'm glad that she'll have you. <laughs> that scene got me so bad. Jim calls for Charlotte and he tells her to stop looking for a cure. He he knows he said, yes, look for a cure, but I'm done. We don't really know how the Bharabhati bond works. We learned about some of it in Clockwork Prince and the way it's being described is like losing something essential of your life, like an arm, a leg or a part of your soul. So when Will was in that inn, he was done eating and he was gonna go. He was gonna go to bed. And the way he felt that pain, the cord snapped. And for a moment, everything went white. No, this is not it. This is not it. I, I knew this, this was the part I was dreading. I didn't want Jim to die, but I didn't want him to stay with Tessa. We still have 200 pages to go in the book. He's not dying. He's not dying. I read the line that says, Jem was dead. Just thinking about it makes me want to cry. Jem's dead. I believe Jem is dead. He's gone forever. I, I don't like it, but now Will can have Tessa all to himself. The fight with the werewolves. Will wanted to die too because he lost his Parabati. I lost it even more and I was a wreck. I just couldn't handle anymore and I just stopped reading. When Council Whalen told Gabriel to not tell Gideon about this new deal that it was just between them to discredit Charlotte. And when he writes that letter, Charlotte loves you. Why would you do that to her? She was giving him another chance to prove to her that he could be trusted. Even Cecily told him. When Gabriel told Cecily, you know, how do you know I'll do the right thing? And Seth was like, because I have faith in you. Gabriel tells Charlotte that he had written this letter discrediting her and she was just staring at him like, so did you send it? He probably did. He did and now he's going to get kicked out of the Institute and Gideon won't be able to look at him. And wait, what? He did not send the letter. You did the right thing, Gabriel. Gideon just announces that he's going to get married to Sophie. Everybody was just like, what? Gideon's like, if you want to turn me down, turn me down now so I don't get my hopes up. How can I turn you down? You haven't proposed to me. Yeah, you announced that you wanted to get married to me, but you didn't really propose to me. We go to Gabriel and Cecily eavesdropping. Yeah, that'll put my brother in his place. It was the most adorable scene between Gideon and Sophie. Charlotte sends the letter to the Enclave and nobody shows up because Council Whalen decided to have a mandatory All Shadow Hunters meeting. Nobody shows up. But, three silent brothers. The only name that stuck out to me were Brother Enoch and Brother Zachariah. Brother Zachariah is in the TMI series. Oh, and let's talk about Henry. Henry invented the portals. And not only that, he invented the sensor and he invented that, um, oh, that little thing that flares up asking for help from the Shadowhunters that Isabel used in City of Fallen Angels at the end after the whole 
thingy majigar for those who have not read it i'm trying not to be spoiler it was so cute reading henry and his invention i am so glad he didn't die will and tessa thought they were gonna die will gives her the news that jem's dead she just thinks we're gonna be dead too so might as well get it over with they get together who finds them once again but magnus bay at first when i read that for some reason i thought it was one of the silent brothers i was i was gonna be so horrified if one of the silent brothers saw them everybody's in battle mode. For some reason, Tessa decides to turn around. She sees Will fighting back to back with the silent brother. The silent brother is Jem! The brother's hood fell back, and his silvery hair shone out in the dim chamber like a starlight. All the air rushed out of Tessa's lungs in a single instant. The silent brother was Jem. When Tessa turned into that angel, whoa, she just grabs Mortimer and goes, okay, oh, look at you, you little puny human. She turns back into Tessa. Everything is so horrible because Jem just leaves without saying goodbye to Will. Jem comes back to sever his ties with Tessa and Will. I wasn't all that sad when he said goodbye to Tessa. Once again, when he said goodbye to Will, Will slid. You left after the battle without saying farewell. Jem just looks at Will. How can I say farewell to you? Oh my gosh, Jessa means a ghost. And I don't understand. Why is Will the only one that can see Jessamine? It's so funny at the end when they go to see Will's parents and Will introduces Tessa as his fiance. His dad turns to Gabriel and he's like, who's this young man? Will's like, oh, that's Mr. Gabriel Lightworm. <laughs> and Gabriel's just like, oh, oh, it's Lightwood. The epilogue of this, we have Jen back in his real form. What? He says that the story involves Herondales, Fairchilds, and Lightwoods working together. And I'm just here thinking, <laughs> that's a heavenly fire! That's a heavenly fire! In the end, Tessa stayed with Will and Jem. Basically kept them both, so she didn't have to choose. Since Tessa's a warlock, she's immortal. She's telling us the story with her and Will. No. <laughs> she has this bracelet that was their 30th anniversary and that when he died, Magnus consoled her. He's like, the first one's always the worst. And she's like, the first what? And he's like, the first love. But one of the funny things when she's talking about her life with Will is when Cecily got married to Gabriel, Will decided to stand up and give a speech. And she's like, with tears running down his face, he starts praising Gabriel Lightwood. And I'm here like, Oh, that's so nice of Will. And then he's like, dear God, I thought she was marrying Gideon. I take it all back. <laughs> I really loved this book, not only because, you know, of Will. We also learn a very valuable lesson. Us as children, we shouldn't be judged by what our parents did in the past. Charlotte deals with it and Gabriel and Gideon deal with it a lot. Especially Gabriel, since he was really, really close to his father. I'm really gonna miss everybody in this book, but I'm glad that Jem is still around along with Tessa. I still have to finish City of Heavenly Fire, which I am looking forward to that, which I already started reading once again. That's all I have for you guys today, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!